My name is Rui Mon James, and uh, this evening I'm presenting on interconnectedness and compassion in the Lotus Sutra, understanding and cultivating compassion in everyday life. Um, I thought of this uh, discussion topic from a pattern of issues and concerns um, I noticed from speaking with several people um, over several months, and I thought uh, this would be something good to talk about um, on a basic level that um, in my, my hope is that it uh, will help strengthen our understanding and cultivation of compassion in everyday life. So first, when I talk about the concept of interconnectedness, uh, in, in Buddhist thought, you know, interconnectedness is often explored under the principle of dependent origination. Um, and that is a foundational doctrine, stating that all phenomena arise, persist, and cease through the interaction of various conditions. No phenomena exists independently. Everything is interconnected and affects everything else. This concept is central not just to understanding the nature of reality in Buddhism, but also in guiding ethical behavior and compassion towards all beings. Here are some examples of uh, interconnectedness in Buddhist thought, uh, dependent origination, like I mentioned. This principle explains that nothing exists in isolation. Every event, entity, or appearance arises from specific conditions that precede it. In the absence of these condition, uh, let's say I use it for example, uh, how a plant, you know, can grow from seed, from the seed, soil, water, and sunlight, right? All of these conditions must be present in order for the plant to exist. And uh, without that or in absence of any of those conditions, the plant, you know, cannot arise. Uh, no self. Interconnectedness is closely linked to the doctrine of no self, which asserts that since all is interdependent, not permanent, independent self exists, right? We, what we consider self is a conglomeration of constantly changing conditions and processes. Now here are some examples of interconnectedness in the Lotus Sutra. The one vehicle, the Lotus Sutra introduces the concept of the one vehicle, which we, we know, I symbolize that all paths taught by the Buddha ultimately lead to the same destination, enlightenment. This teaching unifies all Buddhist practices and followers, emphasizing that all teachings are interconnected and part of a single holistic spiritual journey. Parables. Uh, the Lotus Sutra uses various parables to illustrate interconnectedness. For example, the parable of verbs, Nakamuni Buddha compares himself to a great cloud rain, nourishment, raining, cloud, a cloud raining, nourishing equally upon all types of plants. Right, which grow according to their capacities. The rain symbolizes the Buddhist te teachings, which adapt to varied potential of the beings, yet originate from a single source, showing how all teachings are and beings are interconnected through the Buddha's compassion. And we look at how the Lotus Sutra views interdependence. We look at universal enlightenment. Uh, the Sutra's emphasis on potential for all beings to achieve enlightenment highlights interdependence by illustrating that everyone is a part of a vast and interconnected network of existence. Enlightenment is not an isolated experience, but a state that impacts and elevates all beings within the interconnected web of life. The Lotus Sutra's teachings on interconnectedness not only articulate a profound understanding of the universe, but also foster a compassionate attitude towards all forms of life. Recognizing that our actions echo throughout the web of existence leads to a greater responsibility and mindful living. In embracing interconnectedness, practitioners are encouraged to positively to the whole and advancing along the path to enlightenment together. Teaching on interconnectedness. As mentioned previously, the Lotus Sutra is rich with parables and teachings that illustrate the profound concept of interconnectedness. Several key chapters and parables explicitly demonstrate how all actions and events are interconnected, providing insight into how this understanding can enhance spiritual practice. Uh, chapter three, for example, the parable of the burning house, 
uh, prevents um, the parable where a wise father uses skillful means to save his children from a burning house. You know, promising them various types of parts to lure them outside. The parable shows how different teachings are used to guide beings according to their capacities and inclinations, reflecting the interconnectedness of skillful means and the ultimate goal of enlightenment. Chapter five, the parable of birds. You know, that parable depicts a cloud raining down on various types of plants, each absorbing nourishment according to its capacity. This illustrates the interconnectedness of the Dharma and all living beings, emphasizing how teachings are adapted to meet diverse needs while originating from a single source. Uh, chapter seven, the parable of the magic city. Uh, they are a guide to see a group of weary travelers with an illusion of a magic city, giving them uh, rest before urging them to continue towards the real golden city. Uh, this parable shows how intermediate goals or teachings are interconnected with the ultimate goal, serving as the necessary steps in the journey of spiritual practice. Uh, even chapter 25, the universal gate of the Bodhisattva, uh, chapter describes how compassionate deeds of uh, Avalokiteshvara who helped all beings in distress. The myriad forms that the Bodhisattva took, uh, you know, used to assist those in need, illustrate the interconnectedness of compassion and the sentient beings' myriad situations, highlighting the Bodhisattva's role and responding to the interconnected web of suffering. Now I'd like to discuss some insights on enhancing spiritual practice through interconnectedness. Right? One is empathy and compassion. Understanding interconnectedness fosters a deeper sense of empathy and compassion. Recognizing that one's actions directly affect others lead to a more careful and considerate behavior, enhancing communal harmony and individual spiritual growth. Uh, skillful means. The concept of skillful means, as illustrated in the parables, is deeply connected to the understanding of interconnectedness. By recognizing the diverse and the diverse needs and capacities of all beings, practitioners can better apply methods in their own lives and in helping others, thereby advancing on their own spiritual paths more effectively. And there's universal responsibility. The insight into interconnectedness imbues a sense of universal responsibility, encouraging practitioners to perceive their welfare as bound up with the welfare of all. This perspective is crucial for developing a bodhisattva's vow to liberate all beings, understanding that one's enlightenment is interconnected with the enlightenment of all. And lastly, mind mindfulness of actions. The awareness of interconnectedness heightens mindfulness regarding one's actions and the repercussions. This awareness encourages a lifestyle that upholds the Dharma, promotes moral conduct, and considers the broader impact of one's choices on the community and the environment. Living as a Bodhisattva. As we know, you know, the Bodhisattva idea is a core tenet of Mahayana Buddhism and exemplified by the vow to achieve enlightenment not solely for oneself but for the benefit of all beings. Right? This principle transforms personal spiritual attainment into a universal quest for the liberation of all beings from suffering. When discussing compassion and the Bodhisattva path, I think it's important to note the synthesis in the Lotus Sutra. You know, it challenges followers to undertake this path through several key teachings, which I discussed previously in terms of skillful means, universal potential for Buddha, and encouragement to embrace the path. But a skillful means, chapter two, and then it is a start that introduces that path and shows how the teachings of the spiritual maturity of his listeners. This principle is fundamental for Bodhisattva who must apply wisdom and compassion effectively to help others according to their unique circumstances. Regarding the universal potential for Buddhahood, we look at uh, the parable of the burning house and the teacher of the law. These chapters promote the revolutionary idea that all beings without exception can attain Buddhahood. This inclusivity underscores the Bodhisattva's role in awakening 
this potential in others through teaching, encouragement, and correctness. Regarding the encouragement to them, increase the power, you look at chapter 25, and uh, chapter promoted encouragement to increase the passion and the Bodhisattva path are described and how the Bodhisattva responds to calls for help in various forms. Right? The Bodhisattva vows to relieve suffering and to assist those in danger as a demonstration of the power and reach of compassionate action. The chapter illustrates that through the practice of deep compassion and dedication to helping others, one embodies the Bodhisattva path, providing a powerful example for all practitioners to follow when seeking to alleviate suffering from all beings. This portrayal serves as both inspiration and a call to action for followers to engage actively in compassionate deeds and, and aspire towards the Bodhisattva way of life. Now, when you think of um, a Bodhisattva and, and their compassionate actions, uh, the Lotus Sutra not only encourages understanding and verbal teaching, but emphasizes active, compassionate deeds as the essence of the Bodhisattva path. And these actions are characterized by altruism, serving others selfishly, placing the well-being of others at the forefront of one's spiritual practice, compassionate service, engaging in actions that relieve the suffering of others, from simple acts of kindness to grand gestures of aid and support, endurance, displaying great patience and tolerance, especially in the face of adversity, but when confronted with the ignorance and suffering of others. Cultivating compassion daily. Incorporating compassion into the daily interaction is not just a moral idea, but a practical approach to living that can transform our relationships and communities. Drawn from the teachings of the Lotus Sutra, compassion involves understanding of the suffering and taking active steps to alleviate it. Here's some ways of uh, practicing this in everyday life. Mindful listening. One of the simplest yet most profound ways to practice compassion is through attentive and empathetic listening. In our daily interactions, actively listening to others without judgment allows us to understand their perspectives and challenges better which is the first step in compassionate action. Kind speech. Words have power. Using them wisely and kindly can uplift others and diffuse conflict. The Lotus Sutra emphasizes speaking truthfully and benevolently, ensuring our com communications contribute to others' well-being. Empathetic response. Often we react to situations based on our preconceptions or emotional state. A compassionate approach involves pausing to consider the other person's feelings and circumstances before responding, allowing for more empathetic and supportive interactions. Offering assistance, simple acts of helping, whether it's helping someone carry something heavy, offering directions to a stranger, or providing support during a difficult time are practical manifestations of compassion. Examples of small compassionate acts. Acknowledging others, simple gestures like smiling, making eye contact, or greeting someone warmly can make people feel seen and valued. Reflecting the recognition of their Buddha nature as suggested in the Lotus Sutra. Volunteering your time. Spending time with those who may feel lonely or marginalized, such as elderly neighbors or people in shelters, can have a profound impact. These actions mirror the Bodhisattva's vow to save all beings from suffering. Being patient, practicing patience in frustrating situations, such as in traffic or waiting in line, uh, can help maintain a peaceful environment. This patience is a form of uh, the pyramid of uh, uh, Kshanti, right? a virtue highly regarded in the Lotus Sutra. Forgiving mistakes, offering forgiveness when others wrong us, instead of responding with anger and retribution, you know, exemplifies the compassionate teachings of the Lotus Sutra promoting peace and reconciliation. Educational compassion, sharing knowledge, whether, help, whether helping a colleague understand a new concept or aiding a child with homework is a compassionate act that fosters growth and self-resilience in others.
applying interconnectedness. Recognizing the interconnected nature of everyday situations is central to understanding and applying Buddhist teachings in real life. By cultivating this awareness, we can foster a deeper sense of responsibility and mindfulness about how our actions impact others and the broader world. Here's uh, some ways to perceive and practice this interconnectedness daily. Observing cause and effect. Start by noticing the immediate effects of your actions on your environment and the people around you. For instance, observe how a simple smile can improve someone's mood or how reducing waste can contribute to environmental sustainability. This awareness helps to see the direct links between actions and their outcomes. Understanding wider impacts extend this observation to wider consequences. For example, consider how buying certain products impacts the environment and economy globally, or how sharing a thoughtful post online can influence the attitudes and emotions of others far beyond your direct contact. And here are some practices to enhance the awareness of interconnectedness. Mindful consumption. Be cautious of what you consume, from food or media, from food to media. Understand that your choices in the marketplace affect demand, supply chain, labor conditions, and environmental resources. Choosing local, sustainable, and ethical products is a practical application of interconnectedness. Engaging in community activities. Participate in community-based projects like local cleanups, communal gardening, or charity events. These activities not only benefit the direct environment, but also strengthen community bonds, showcasing how interconnected and reliant we are on one another. Reflective practices. Regularly engage in reflection or meditation on the dependent origination of your actions. Consider, for instance, the many hands involved in bringing your morning coffee or tea, from the growers to the packagers to the retailers. This reflection fosters a deeper appreciation and a more responsible approach to everyday choices. And encouraging mindfulness of actions impact. We look at teaching and sharing. Educate others about the impact of everyday actions through discussions, blogs, or social media. Sharing knowledge about interconnectedness can inspire others to be more mindful of their impact on the world. Cultivate an empathy. Try to understand the situations and feelings of others by imagining yourself in their place. This practice not only deepens personal empathy, but also reinforces the understanding of how deeply our lives are intertwined. Implement an eco-friendly practices. Adopt habits that protect the environment, like recycling, conserving water, and reducing energy consumption. These practices are concrete expressions of mindfulness about the impact of our actions on a global ecosystem. You know, seeing the interconnected nature of everyday situations enhance our understanding of the Buddhist concept of dependent origination in practical terms. It encourages us to live more mindfully, considering the broader impact of our actions. By fostering this awareness and incorporating these practices in our daily lives, we contribute to a more compassionate, thoughtful, and sustainable world, embodying the principles taught in the Buddhist teaching. This approach not only benefits us individually and spiritually, but also promotes the well-being of the community and the environment. Mindful communication. Compassionate listening and speaking are powerful tools for enhancing relationships and fostering understanding within communities. These techniques are grounded in empathy and mindfulness, allowing for deeper connections and more effective communication. Here are some techniques for compassionate listening. Active listening. This involves fully concentrating on what is being said rather than passively hearing the speaker's words. It means listening with all senses, paying attention not just to the words, but also to the nonverbal signals, such as body language and emotional tone. Reflective listening. Echoing back what you've heard to show that you understand and confirm your understanding. This can involve paraphrasing or simply repeating key points, which reassures the speaker that their message is being received accurately. Empathetic engagement. Try to feel what the speaker is feeling. 
by engaging empathetically, you validate their emotions and create a space where they feel safe to express themselves openly. Avoiding interruption. Allow the speaker to finish their thoughts without interruption. This shows respect for their perspective and encourages a more open and honest dialogue. Now let's look at some techniques for compassionate speaking. Mindful speech. Be aware of the impact your words might have. Choose words that are kind and constructive. Avoiding harsh language or criticism that might hurt or alienate others. Expressing understanding. When responding, first acknowledge the emotions and perspectives of others. This doesn't necessarily mean agreeing, but showing that you understand where they're coming from. Using I statements. Frame your responses in the first person to express how you feel or how something affects you rather than making accusations or generalized statements. This reduces defensiveness in others and centers the conversation around personal experiences and feelings. You can also look at the transformative impact on relationships and community interaction. I have four here, building trust and rapport. Compassionate communication helps build trust and strengthens relationships. When people feel listened to and understood, they are more likely to trust and open up. This is essential not only in personal relationships, but also in choosing and creating cohesive community bonds. Resolving conflicts. By addressing conflicts with compassion and understanding, you can de-escalate tense situations and find solutions that acknowledge everyone's needs. This approach prevents conflicts from damaging relationships and instead turns them into opportunities for growth and understanding. Fostering inclusion and cooperation. Compassionate communication encourages inclusivity and cooperation. It helps diverse groups to work together harmoniously and focus in on common goals and mutual respect, essential for community projects and initiatives. Enhancing emotional health. Communities and relationships where compassionate communication is practiced tend to have higher levels of emotional health. Members feel supported, understood, and valued, which contribute to overall well-being. Overcoming challenges with compassion. Living compassionately is an aspirational goal in many spiritual and ethical systems where it forms a core part of their teachings. However, in practice, many find it challenging to consistently embody compassion due to various obstacles. I wanna talk about some common uh, obstacles to uh, compassionate living. Not that it applies to anyone here. Uh, Self-centeredness. Often individuals focus primarily on their own desires and problems, overlooking the needs and sufferings of, of others. This self-focus can be a significant barrier to acting compassionately. Stress and overwhelm. In a fast-paced, high-pressure society, stress and overwhelm can deplete a person's emotional reserve, making it difficult to extend compassion to others when one is struggling personally. Lack of understanding or empathy. Without a deep understanding of other situations or feelings, it can be hard to feel genuine compassion. Prejudices or a lack of exposure to diverse perspectives can exacerbate this. Fear and insecurity. Sometimes fear or feeling threatened can lead to defensive behaviors that are the opposite of compassion. People might fear that being compassionate will make them vulnerable or that others will take advantage of their kindness. Here are some insights from the Lotus Sutra to um, address these challenges. One, the universal Buddha nature. The Lotus Sutra emphasizes that all beings have the potential to become Buddha, which means everybody has an inherent capacity for great compassion and wisdom. Recognizing the Buddha nature in every person can help overcome feelings of separate separateness and promote a more inclusive and compassionate outlook. Skillful means. The concept of skillful means suggests adapting methods to the capacities and situations of individuals. This can be applied to compassion by understanding the specific needs and conditions of those around us and responding in the most effective way to alleviate their suffering. 
the parable of the herbs. This parable teaches that the Buddha's teachings, like the rain, nourish all beings according to their capacities, suggesting that compassion isn't one size fit all, but tailored to the needs of each situation. We can apply this by offering support that is actually helpful and appropriate to the context. Encouragement to practice persistently. The sutra encourages persistent practice, even when results aren't immediately evident. This can be particularly inspiring for maintaining compassion in the face of challenges or when we don't see immediate changes in our surroundings. Here are some practical steps to overcome these obstacles. Developing self-awareness. Regular meditation and mindfulness can increase self-awareness, which is crucial for recognizing our biases and the moments when we are centered too much on ourselves. Education and exposure. Learn about other cultures, situations, or difficulties can foster empathy. Direct interaction with diverse groups can also break down barriers and misconceptions, facilitating a deeper understanding and compassion. Building emotional resilience, engaging in practices that build resilience, such as mindfulness, meditation, and community support, can provide the emotional strength needed to be compassionate even in stressful times. Reflecting on interconnectedness, regularly reflecting on the interconnected nature of all life can help dissolve fear and insecurities by highlighting how helping others ultimately benefits ourselves and the whole community. While there are significant obstacles to living compassionately, the teachings of the Lotus Sutra offer valuable insights and methods for overcoming these challenges. By embracing the idea of inherent Buddha nature and all, using skillful means and committing to persistent practice, individuals can cultivate a more compassionate approach to life, benefiting themselves and the wider community. The benefits of compassion. Living with a deep understanding of interconnectedness and practicing compassion can significantly benefit both individuals and communities. These principles central to the Lotus Sutra foster a more harmonious and supportive environment, enhancing the well-being of all involved. Here are some personal benefits of interconnectedness and compassion. Enhance emotional well-being. Individuals who practice compassion often experience increased happiness and reduced stress. Understanding interconnectedness can lead to a greater sense of belonging and purpose, which are key components of emotional health. Personal growth and self-realization. Living compassionately encourages personal virtues, such as patience, humility, and generosity. These practices can lead to profound personal transformation and growth, aligning one's actions with deeper values. Improved relationships. Compassion and understanding foster deeper bonds between individuals. Recognizing the interconnected nature of relationships can lead to a more empathetic and supportive interactions, which are the foundation of strong, healthy relationships. And we look at communal, be communal benefits, social cohesion and harmony, communities that embrace interconnectedness and compassion tend to experience higher levels of trust and cooperation. This can lead to a more effective collaboration with communal projects and a stronger, more resilient community fabric. Reduction in social conflict by promoting empathy and understanding, compassion can act as a buffer against conflicts and misunderstanding within communities. Interconnectedness reminds us uh, individuals of their shared destinies, encouraging solutions that are beneficial for all parties. Enhance support networks. Communities grounded in these values typically have strong support networks, crucial during times of individual or collective crisis. People are more likely to look out for each other and provide help when needed. The practice of interconnectedness and compassion is not merely about altruistic behavior. It's about transforming the way we see the world and our place in it. As the Lotus Sutra suggests, these practices hold the key to unlocking profound joy and unlimited spiritual growth, both for the individual and the community. By embracing the pra and practicing these teachings, we can forge a path that leads not only to personal enlightenment, but to the creation of a more compassionate and harmonious world. I started this uh, discussion with um, 
talking about how my inspiration for, for this was um, conversations I had with, with other people. And um, the one thing that I would say was common uh, with these set of individuals is this idea of um, not being enough. And um, whenever I explored that with them, it always seemed to come back to what I discussed. You know, and I was thinking how many people in their circles, so to speak, you know, if they engaged in uh, or, or had a, an understanding and cultivating this interconnectedness and having compassion with this person still have this belief about themselves. So, um, again, this was my uh, kind of basis for this discussion, and I do hope that uh, some parts of it uh, you guys find helpful and something you might uh, take home and um, help others with in some way, shape, or form. Thank you. Thank you, Dumont. That was very nice. And before we open it up to other questions, the, the only thing that I would like to uh, add to there is to make, and you, you did it to a certain extent, but to uh, emphasize a little bit more the distinction between loving kindness and compassion. Because compassion, as Yumon was mentioning, is almost comes naturally out of really understanding interconnectedness and interpenetration. If one gets the first one, the second one is much easier to, uh, to understand. However, we sometimes misunderstand the distinction between loving kindness and compassion. The, the, those are the two fir the first two Brahma Viharas, loving, loving kindness, then compassion, followed by sympathetic joy and, and finally equanimity. But the easiest way to explain uh, loving kindness is from the Metta Sutra, which is that imagine a mother who has a single child and you love that child without any limitations. It's, it's a the state of not only um, loving openly without condition, but it is being willing to sacrifice oneself for the other whomever that is, that's loving kindness. Compassion, on the other hand, requires wisdom, prajna, and upaya, skillful means. Compassion is a different sort of thing because one uses one's wisdom and skillful means to determine how best to assist the other person. Loving kindness is unconditional love and concern for the other. And compassion is using one's wisdom in order to assist in a more directive fashion. One still has an openness about the other, uh, no discrimination, no conception, etc. On the other hand, one uses wisdom through upaya to effect a mean uh, to effect an end, and I think that that's really an important an important distinction that I wanted to make here. Uh, the, the example that I often give is um, loving kindness. If a person who is an alcoholic and has chosen to be completely sober doesn't want any alcohol, etc., loving kindness, one might um, give that alcoholic a bottle of whiskey when they are feeling that they need it or that they want it. Maybe they don't need it, but when they want it, because you love the person, there is no conceptualization about that person. You're just saying this person is suffering. Here's the, here's the bottle. Of God, I, I, I hope it's a good single ball. Um, whereas compassion on the other hand, one would look at the situation and realize, yes, this person wants, it's the person suffering without a doubt, and they want this bottle of whiskey to help them feel better. On the other hand, 
if they have made the choice previously to abstain from drinking alcohol, then you would be doing them a disfavor by giving them that out, that, that whiskey. You're being more compassionate by not enabling them as opposed to providing what they think they want. That, that I mean, that's, you know, that's taking it to a limit, but that's an example of the difference between uh, loving kindness and compassion. And so I think that both loving kindness and compassion are a natural result of interconnectedness, but we have to recognize that with compassion, there are some caveats that we put in there. We do conceptualize a bit by virtue of the fact that we look at the circumstance and we look at the um, result of our actions, whereas in loving kindness, we might not. That's my only, that's my only comment. Thank you again, Dumont. I'm going to ask the...